Welcome to our virtual YouTube channel. In this class, we learn how to make this beautiful design that we are seeing. It's a very simple tutorial and it's beginner friendly. If this is something you like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, for this design, the first thing you need to note is to know where you're going to be placing this. So I have my mannequin like this. So it's going to come from the around the center front area like this. And then it goes over the ham and then back to the center back. Okay. So it doesn't have to be like this. Just note where you want this to be. And then you place your tape to measure. So I have around 19, 20 inches here. So I'm going to be working with 20 inches for this tutorial. Okay, so this is going to be like my foundation fabric. This is just a bridal satin. You can use any fabric of your choice. So I have 20 inches. The 20 inches, approximately 20 inches that I measured. This is what I'm going to be using, including my seam allowance. And I'm cutting. If you want to line this, you can line it. And if you don't want to combine, I think I'm going to be lining it. So I'm folding it to cut the lining and the main fabric together. So now once i have it like this i have 20 inches and then the width of this design from 10 to 12 inches is fine so i have around 12 and a half inches here so i'm just going to reduce this so that i can have just around 12 inches so i'm going to have a fabric of 20 inches by 12 inches so once i have it you can leave it like this but i want this to a bit shaped so to shape it i'm just going to fold it like this so that i can have something uniform on both sides so again i'm going to fold this into four and i'm going to create like a curve here okay this is actually optional but this is the shape that i want to go for so once you cut it and you open it out you will see that it is no longer straight you can see that you have curved edges like this so if you are not okay with the design you can still go ahead and reshape it so we have this now the next thing is to bring in our main fabric so for this i'm working with this fabric this is like is i think it's called organdi it's thicker than organza but it's very very similar it's thicker than organza and it's, it's also a soft fabric but you can see it's not organza you can see that it's not frilling like organza and it's thick so i think it's called organdi and that is what we're going to be using to run our gathers so now the first thing you need to do now is to determine the width of your gathers so i'm going to fold this fabric very well so it's going to be easier for me to work on so i want each of them to be around three inches okay in width so on fold that's going to give me six inches so now i'm going to measure six inch inches in server and then i'm going to cut it out so i'll just you can see that i folded my fabric neatly and i'm measuring six inches now okay so now from there, I'll measure another 6 inches. So I'll just cut a long fabric of 6 inches all through like that. Okay, so I've gone ahead to cut them now. They are 6 inches long and it's a long strip of fabric. So now I'm going to fold it into two. So once you fold it, you have 3 inches. And then I'm going to run a gather stitch now and gather each of them okay so now i'm going to determine the amount of layers i want for this remember it's 12 inch, it's 12 inches so i can have like two two inches which will give me two, uh, six layers so one two three four five or one and a half inches depending on how close you want your lines to be so now i'm going to make mark one inch above here has my seam allowance for turning then from there i'm going to mark in two two inches in tava okay or one and a half inches because i really want them to be close so now if i have mark one and a half three then four and a half so that's totally up to you so i'm going to mark one and a half inches and make them into a straight line 
Okay, so I've made my markings now and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and I have one inch on both sides for turning it. So you can see what I have. So for neatness, you can decide to first sew this and turn it before you gather it. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead now and gather all of them. So I'll gather them and bring it to us to show us how we're going to place it. Okay, so I've gone ahead to gather my fabrics and this is what i have so the beauty of this fabric is that is it acts like organza even with little gathering it's going to give you this puffy effect that you have here okay so the length i worked with for this fabric was the 20 inches we measured multiplied by three and that gave me 60 inches which is the length of the fabric i'm working with so now the next thing is for me to place this like this and then i'm going to go ahead and sew it on the lines that I have there on just my main fabric okay not the lining so that's why you have the lines there to guide you I'm going to place it and sew it on the lines okay so okay so I'm gonna head to sew them now you can see so like I said you can turn this part out before you gather it so that it's going to be neat or you just weave it but the secret to this is you just make your intervals very close to each other so that the previous one is going to cover up the rough edges you have on the next one and then the closer it is the more ruffles you're going to have so now you can see the ruffles i have with six layers here now so this is the wrong side you can see my seam line on the wrong side so now to cover this this is the first layer and this is the last layer you can see the last layer now the sixth layer the fifth layer is covering the sixth layer so for us to cover this first layer now I'm going to be working with my lining okay and this lining is also going to cover all this seam line on the wrong side for me so what I'm going to do now is to place this lining above it so once you place it over it like this I'm going to match it match it with each other because we use them to cut each other it should exactly be the same so I'm pinning it to guide me so once it is pinned I'm going to turn it to the wrong side and then I'm going to sew it on this exact point where I sew this so that I can use that to turn it so when you're pinning it you make sure that all your seam allowance is folded towards this upper part so that by the time you sew it it's going to turn out everything neatly for you so now i'm pinning it in place for it not to shift so once you pin it and when you're sewing okay you can see the way i sew it you fold in the first one the first one you fold it in like this you can see how i folded it in so that this rough edge is not going to show so you fold in the first the the first lay the first part that you're going to sew. you fold it in before you start sewing it so that you can have something this neat and then you lift allowance for turning with lining on these edges also if you are turning with lining so i'm going to pin it and turn and sew it around so i'll just leave small space to turn it out and then we're going to see what it looks like okay so i've placed them on each other now and then i sew on the upper part you can see that i sew on the exact point where i placed my ruffle so that the seam allowance is going to be in between my main fabric and lining like this so i just sew it around as we have seen and then from this little space i'm going to carefully turn it out okay so after turning it out now you will notice that it is neat so this is what the wrong side looks like now you can see how neat it is so you just go ahead now and fold in your seam allowance you can top stitch on it or just use your emery glue to cover it up so now i'm going to arrange this very well and then i'm going to go ahead and place it on my fabric so if you are to be working with an actual fabric it is advisable you can make this around four inches so that by the time you finish sewing it you'll be left with three inches so that it can comfortably close up the rough edges you have on the next one and then you make your intervals as close together as possible so that the next one is going to comfortably close up whatever rough edges you may have on the previous one so now here i'm going to just try to top stitch on this tiny a bit so that i can relax well because i don't want it to be poking out like this so i'm going to stop stitch on it so that i can relax well then we'll take it to the mannequin so that we can see what it looks like okay so this is what the design looks like i just held it with a pin here but you just need to 
so it's to the dress that you're making this to so the logic is to make these pieces close together you can make your design as your fabric as long as possible so that it can completely close up the next one so i hope you enjoyed making this beautiful tutorial with me if you enjoyed this let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye